Good evening, everyone. This video we'll be looking at, talking a little bit about the not so recent, it's a, eh, I don't know, a week or a little bit ago, newly discovered near Earth object, 2015 TB145. Uh, so before we look at the orbit diagram, Over on MSN, they do have a short video with a little bit of information about this. Apparently, October the 10th was when it was discovered, they claim, on Pan Stars 1. And they go in to discuss how on Halloween, October the 31st, it'll make a close pass by the Earth. It says it is a extremely eccentric, high inclination orbit. And it will also go on to say they hope to obtain images. They are very into these rocks. It has a magnitude of 19.9. It is not projected to impact the Earth. Now when we think about NASA, JPL, Jack Parsons, they are definitely satanic. Those of you that don't believe, I can't help it. That is why your missions, such as Apollo, for one, have the names that they do. Apollo was a god that was worshipped. He was the devil, essentially. He just used the name Apollo. Abaddon, also in the Greek, Apollyon of the abyss, short for Apollyon, is Apollo. So, why would you choose the name of such things like that to name your missions after? And then it was said and known that Jack Parsons himself was a, a Satanist, and he received a lot of his information from the other side, from them. Anyhow, this is a little information that they have put up. You can watch the little video and stuff. This is the near Earth object list of objects that are supposedly making close approaches and such not. And other times things have flown by and gotten close. They said it won't hit, and they were right. You have to really want to give them credit, but you have to admit they were right. They're right because they get a lot of information from the other side. From the side that the monsters, the demons, live on. Oh, there could be a discussion rendered about how many heavens there are. Some people argue there are more than three, but generally the majority agree that there's three. The first heaven being what we live on, here on the ground, extending all the way up to the sky that we look up and see, to the farthest boundary of our, what we call, atmosphere. From that invisible boundary line on out further is what we look up at nighttime and see is dark in space. We call it space. We've been trained that that is called space. So however huge that really is, 
That is called the second heaven. From the point of our atmosphere outward, for however long that is, there's another boundary that closes it in. And from the point of that boundary on out is the third heaven. <clears throat> so they are in the know about these objects that are in the second heaven space. And what the chart is telling us, what they're allowing us to see, is these lunar distances are quite far away. We have one here, it's 4.2, but that date is already passed. And it wasn't that big anyway. You can see here is 2015 TB 145 projected to go by on October the 31st, and it's a 1.3 distance. See a different distance. You can see that there's a 9.5, but it's even farther away, and it's much smaller on the 29th, and that's 2015 UH. All the rest of these are. You know, there's a 13, a 16, you know, quite far away. The 5.9 on November the 20th, but that's even farther than this one we're discussing. So we will look at the orbit diagram now, and I have this set for one month ago. So you can see the light blue dot, there is the object. And you can see the Earth. And that's how far it was a month ago away from us. We will go day by day. You can see the trajectory bringing it's coming in, making its pass. Now this, right here, where it's at here, on October the 10th, that would be the day they claim they first saw it. You can see the, the Earth distance AU over here on the left as it closes in, it gets closer and closer, the numbers are going down and down. There is today, October the 24th, 0.156 distance right now. They are projecting the 31st. See, it's coming close to the Earth dot, the planet. There's the 31st, 0.0146. But as you can see, actually, November the 1st is actually closer, you know, technically, date-wise, because that's point zero zero seven one. You can see that the, um, the dots are pretty well indistinguishable. It's like they're sitting right on top of each other. So they are saying not, not to worry. They've been right so far on all the other ones.
it will be supposedly by their given numbers and estimates and diagram farther away than the moon. I don't think this is going to disrupt the moon in any way. I don't think it's going to ram into the moon. I think it's just another one of those objects that they're interested in when it comes close. Now when you think about these things, and you know that we had a creator, you know we had God made everything, I think he's created creative enough that he makes life. He makes things alive. He doesn't, he doesn't make things that are dead and useless. So whenever you see these so-called, what we've been trained in thinking they are, comets, meteors, asteroids, these rocks, or icy snowballs as they would have us believe, If he does create everything living, why are there so many supposed dead rocks flying around? I think that's something you should think about. Those in the know, like NASA and JPL and the workers, the big brains at CERN and such. That's why they're in the know. They have the knowledge of what these truly are or were. And like I said before, doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. Because just because you don't believe it doesn't make it not true. They've been talking to these things on the other side and working with them. They know it's true. They know they're getting their help from them. But they're too short-sighted to see that in the long run, they're going to get screwed. And because of it, it's going to screw everybody else. We we're talking about angels. They're a lot smarter than we are, you know. Maybe at one point we were made smarter than them, but we dumbed ourselves down in the garden when we made the wrong choice. We believed a lie, and we were apparently taken down a few rungs. Now, I've mentioned before, Angels can look like men. Angels come in different forms. I mean, you've got the seraphim, the cherubim, you know, the so-called guardians and such. There's some you know, pretty different looking things that we're not used to seeing. We're used to seeing people. Things that look like us. But, I mean, not all of them look like us. You know, some of them look like they got six wings on them. And, you know, the body looks such like a, some would call a snake, but I, I think the, the right term would actually be serpent. So you see something that looks like a serpent with six wings on it. You're going to be saying that don't look like you. But according to ancient texts and descriptions and stuff, that's what one class of angels looks like. The other class has got four faces, you know. I mean, you're, you're talking about something with... Um, 
you know, face like a man and a, an eagle and a lion and like it was like a you know like a bull or something. So we're not used to seeing things with four faces either, are we? So if you don't know that angel descriptions include those those descriptions, which are supposed to be two classes of angels, you're automatically going to be in the UFO belief, and you're going to be thinking, oh, aliens, yes, they are. When are you going to get it through your head? Anything off planet Earth is called an alien. What are they, what's the term that they don't like to use about people illegally coming across the southern border? Illegal aliens. They say aliens because, well, they don't like to do it now, but they did because they're not from here. They're coming in illegally. So, technically, when these fallen things and demons and stuff reach the barrier, they are technically illegal aliens by definition. So this is going to, back to the object here, it's going to fly on by by December the 3rd. And we keep going. And it looks like it's gone you know, sometime in January. So that is your timeline. For this object, with the stories coming about, we're calling it a, a spooky Halloween object flyby. And this is the information that they put out. <clears throat> so before all the all the others, it will probably be piling on and putting their stories out about this. Maybe I didn't get it out quick enough, but this is so you can see it with your own eyeballs and think about things. No, we will get an object or two or three or more. Very much so. But the time for it isn't now. But the time is a-coming. They had a bad accident here in Oklahoma, over in Stillwater, I see on the news, where apparently the story is some drunk young lady ran into a crowd of people and killed some and injured some. So that's apparently, apparently they're saying she was drunk. We got so much coming out, I'm not sure if they know for sure exactly everything right now or not. But it was a tragedy for sure. Just standing around and I think it was a parade is what they said. And then all of a sudden a car wheels into a crowd and you never you never know when you're gonna take your last breath. That's why it's important to me to transfer what I know to be fact and truth about where are you going to be because you will you will whether you believe it or not you'll be in front of the Lord at some point in time and you don't want to be told that you can't come in because you never believed in him. So you really do need to accept Jesus. Because you never know when your last day is going to be. When it is, like I keep 
keep harping on. People probably get tired of hearing it. But oh well. It's better you get tired of hearing it when somebody tries and nobody gives a crap about you and nobody tries. You get choice A, you get your choice B. You accept Jesus. You try to live as good as you can the way that he would have you live. Then you get heaven. Or you say it's a bunch of hooey, you don't believe in it. Or you believe in Allah or Hare Krishna or you're a Satanist and you worship the devil. Or you're just a big brain that says, We're just gonna go and be cosmic energy. Yes. My particles will just become part of the all. Well, that's choice B. And that's rejection of Jesus. And choice B doesn't get to come into the kingdom. Because you made choice B your choice. So you have to go to the hot spot. The nasty place. Not good. You don't want that. <clears throat> so be aware. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I don't, you might be able to see this if you've got some magnification of some sort. Maybe it's possible if you got something good. You just have to see. I'm not sure I got anything good enough where I'll be able to look at it. I have to look it up and see exactly what kind of magnification I'm going to need. But I'll keep looking up. And you keep looking up because that's what he said. Look up for your redemption draws near. God bless everybody. I'll see you soon.